Hey fam, how y'all doing today? I want to talk a little bit about my favorite subject, and that is why I don't like the stock market. Yes, I spent many years in the stock market, probably like many of you. Uh, originally, I signed up. Uh, the company came around, said they have a 401k plan, and that 401k plan, uh, if you put up to 6% of your income in that plan, they would match you $1 uh, on the dollar. For every dollar you put in, up to 6% of your income, they would match you dollar for dollar. So that's how I got uh, an understanding or uh, first was uh, introduced to the stock market. But even then, I didn't realize what I was getting into, right? I was in mutual funds and had no idea what a mutual fund was. But I rode with it. Uh, it wasn't until later uh, that I found out the real truth about the stock market. And so I'm going to share with you today why I don't like it anymore. Uh, it's, it's, it's there for a reason. I understand the majority of Americans believe it is the greatest thing since sliced bread, but I'm not a believer anymore. And I'm going to explain to you why. So let me start at the top as why I don't like the stock market and why I refuse to invest any more of my money in the stock market. First of all, they charge me a 1% stupid fee because that's what the financial managers and advisors are charging me to manage my own money. Mr. Ray, we're going to charge you 1%. We're going to make sure you're in the right investments. We're going to make sure you have 60% in stocks and 40% in bonds. That way you are diversified. Wait a minute. You're charging me money to manage my money? Yes. Why? Because you're stupid. No, I don't think so. I think I can manage my money better than you can. And then on top of that, they got all these fees. There's management fees, loads fees, setup fees, commission fees, there's front end fees, there's back end fees. Before you know it, you done made, they done made so much money off of you in fees, you never gonna get ahead. Too many fees. And then there's this thing called the capital gains stack. If you buy a stock and you hold that stock for a year or even more, uh, you're gonna pay capital gains top, capital gains tax if you sell that. Right. And so there's no tax incentive for me uh, when I buy stocks, because anytime I sell one, I am now engaging in capital gains tax. And then also it's just too volatile for me uh, with Corona coming up right now, with everything that's going on. Many people have lost 30, 40 percent of the value of their stocks. I mean, and that's money that's just gone. They're never going to get it back. You can literally lose your whole investment in the stock market. And then they have this whole thing around, I got to let my money sit and grow for 30 years. I have to uh, have this delayed gratification. So over 30 years, I'm not allowed to touch my money. I can't spend it. I can't enjoy any. I got to wait till I'm 60, 70 years old before I can get my money. I don't like that. And then let's say I wake up one day and I have a bright idea that I want to withdraw some of my money. Maybe I have an emergency. Oh, no, Mr. Ray, you have to pay a 10% early withdrawal penalty. I'm like, really? On top of the taxes? Yes. And then think about this. They have this 4% rule. It says that you can only withdraw 4% of your uh, investment when you retire. If you have $100,000 in, in your account, 401k, in order to make that $100,000 last the rest of your life, you can only withdraw 4% of that. That means you got to live on $4,000 that year if that's what you have, $100,000. And then lastly but not least, they tell you the reason why you invest in stocks is so you can participate in the 40-40 plan. Uh, so you know, you don't know what the 40-40 plan is? Well, the 40-40 plan is what 90% of Americans do. They work 40 hours a week, right, for 40 years so they can live on 40% of what they earn. I don't like that plan, and I think there is a better plan. All right, so here's a great opportunity for me to slide a little rayism in on you. You see, people have this confused. Wages will make you a living when you're working for the man, and he pays you W-2 wages and he gives you insurance and he provides dental and all that. That'll make you a living and you'll live good. But profits make you a fortune, my brother. And the only way that you can make real profits is investing in yourself. And some people got this thing confused that savings and investing is the same thing. No, 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 no. 
And saving, you're just investing for safety. And investing, you're investing to make more than what you have. You are increasing your money that you're saving. So there's a difference. Understand the difference. You know me, I like math. So let's do a little math and talk about the equation when you pit stock market against a real estate investment. Let's just assume you have $100,000 uh, to purchase stocks in the stock market, and you also have $100,000 that you can buy real estate with. Which is a better deal? I believe it's real estate, and let me show you why. So when you purchase the stock, you gotta pay the whole $100,000 to the man to get $100,000 worth of stock, right? When you buy real estate, you can use what we call leverage. You can go to the bank and say, hey, I wanna buy that $100,000 house, uh, I got $20,000, can you do that for me? And the bank will say, yes, we'll finance that for you 5 or 6% for 30 years. Great, sign me up. So of my $100,000, I'm only going to put 20000 of it in real estate. Let's continue with the example here. So now on the stock side, I have $100,000 in stock. On the real estate side, I only have $20,000 invested in a $100,000 piece of property. All right, now let's go and see what's the return on my investment. Well, if you look at the stock market, if I get a 10% gain in the stock market, then I will earn $10,000. Well, I'm going to take uh, the low end on real estate and say, well, real estate's only going to make me 6%, just to show you the power here. So if I make 6% on my 20000 investment, I actually have a rate of return of 30% as opposed to if I invested $100,000 in the stock market, I only get a 10% return, right? That is huge. That's a huge difference. And I still got 80000 in my pocket. I can go do it four more times. And then last but not least, I don't have any control of the stock market. You see what's going on with coronavirus today? It's wiped out 30, 40, 50% of the market value of all people that were invested in stocks. That's you and me, right? But in real estate, I have control over the asset. Today, my assets are still worth the same thing as when I bought them. If I had a, I got 20 houses and all of them basically still have the same value. I'm still receiving rent from tenants. I'm doing well, but anything I had in the stock market has lost its value. I don't have any control. I have control in real estate and zero control in the stock market. And that's not good. So let me just continue on with my rationale for why I don't like the stock market and I like real estate. Well, the other reason I like it because in the stock market, there's only two ways that I can get paid. That is, if I buy a stock and the value goes up and I sell that stock, I get the difference in that value. And that's called capital gains. Therefore, I pay taxes on that. The other way I can get it is through dividends. The company will pay dividends and that's on a monthly basis. I receive a certain percentage, five, six percent dividend on the stock. But in real estate, I get paid five different ways. Let's talk about that. The first one is the gold standard, which is cash flow. Money over and above your expenses when you buy real estate is called cash flow. And that's what I look for. That builds that residual income. That's where you get that money every month. I'm talking about real passive income. But secondly, you get what we call equity capture. If you buy the property right, let's say a property is worth $100,000, you buy it for $80,000, you have $20,000 equity the day that you purchase that property. That's $20,000 that's buying power. The other thing is you get market appreciation. Homes typically, historically, always go up in value. A house that's worth 100000 a day, in five years, it's going to be worth more than that, probably $110,000, $120,000. So that's the market appreciation. And then as you paying down the loan every month, or not you, your renter is paying down the loan every month, you get an additional principal pay down. Again, building equity and value in the property. And then last but certainly not least, you have assets that provide you tax shelters. Everything you do in real estate, every expense that you make, all your uh, taxes, insurance, all your depreciation, all your all, all, everything, you get to write it off dollar for dollar in real estate. You cannot do that with the stock market. So the main difference is, is, the, is the tax advantage of real estate, baby. There's, there's nothing like it. I mean, everything you do in your business, you get to write it off dollar to dollar. And that's huge. 
If I spend $100 uh, fixing something, I know that I get $100 taken off of my tax bill, dollar for dollar. Look at all these things you get, mortgage interest, real estate tax, advertising, capital. I mean, everything that you do, you get to write it off. That's the advantage of real estate over stocks. Let me go ahead and just tell you about another rayism. Residual passive income is the gift that keeps on giving, baby. It's the goose that keeps laying golden egg. It's making money while you sleep. You want that passive income. You don't want earned income when you're always working for the man, W-2. It's earned income. You want money while you sleep. You want money while you're at the park. You want to be making money and making money, and you don't even know you're making money. That's when you get real wealth. All right, so let me just wrap it up here. Uh, full disclosure, there is a time when it's okay to invest in stocks. If your company offers you a 50% or 100% match on every dollar that you invest up to 6%, I would say do that. That's a good investment. There's nowhere out there you can get 50 cents on a dollar on your investment, but only do it up to that. That means that you will have some money set aside in the nest egg uh, 30 years later, but that's not what we're saying you're depending on, right? We're going to develop a side hustle and we're going to take that savings and we're going to make real estate work for us and build us some real wealth. So that's all I'm saying. I don't like stocks. Uh, if your company offers you 401k with 50%, uh, 100% match on the dollar, take that. That's, that's easy money, but don't put all your eggs in that basket. Don't look for your 401k to provide you all that you'll need in retirement because it won't.